We're looking at trigonometry, trigonometric ratios in particular. This is covering exercise 8.1, question 1. Question reads, in triangle ABC, right angled at B, side AB is equal to 24 centimeters and side BC equals 7 centimeters. We're asked to determine the sine of A, the cosine of A, the sine of C, and the cosine of C. Now, so here we're going to do a sketch of the right angle triangle. Remember, we're told that the triangle ABC is right angled at what? At B. So this is our right angle here, and this right angle here is 90 degrees. And that's where B should actually be. And so we're going to label the other two sides in B, A and C respectively. Now, AC, we're not given the measurement for that, but we're told that AB is 24 centimeters. Let's input that. And we're also told that side BC, its length is 7 centimeters. Now, what about side AC? Side AC is not given. However, we could find the length of side AC using the Pythagoras theorem. You recall that when, you give, when you're given two sides of a right angle triangle, you can find the third side using this formula. C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared. So this side AC faces the right angle. It's opposite the right angle. But it's not called opposite, it's called the hypotenuse. Why is it called the hypotenuse? Well, it is a side that faces the right angle and it is the longest side in a right angle triangle. And so the name given to that is the hypotenuse. Now, in this formula, known as the Pythagoras theorem, the square of the hypotenuse is equal to the sum of the square of the other two sides. So this C here, common letter C by the way should be, is representing the length of the hypotenuse. So the hypotenuse here is really length C or side C, common letter, from the formula, as a matter of fact. So now we do not know what a hypotenuse is, so we're going to leave C unchanged for now. And then A and B are the length are the lengths of the other two sides. We can give any one of the measurements, um, A or B. Why? Because adding is commutative. It doesn't matter the order. So we're going to say, let A be equal to 24. So we're going to square A, R square 24. And B, let that be 7 centimeters. And so we're going to square B, or square 7. So we have C squared is equal to 576 plus 49. Uh, further, 576 plus 49 is 625. And for us to find C, now we need to square root both sides. So when I square root this side, I get C. And I square root this side, I get 25. So I just found the length of the hypotenuse, otherwise referred to as C from the, trig the Pythagorean theorem. This is our hypotenuse, and it's 25 centimeters. So C here is 25 centimeters. So now, so we have the measurements, 24 for side AB, 7 for side BC, and the hypotenuse, which is AC in this case, is 25 centimeters. We found this using the Pythagorean theorem, or Pythagoras theorem. Now, in order for us to find sine of A, we need to pay attention to the ratio for the sine. Sine ratio, let's write that, the sine of the acute angle, and now we consider acute angle A, is equal to the opposite side over the hypotenuse. So considering acute angle A, which is this angle right here, the side that it faces, or the side that's opposite it, is side BC. So we call this side the opposite, as easy as that. And the opposite side is side BC. I'm going to divide it by the hypotenuse, and the hypotenuse here is AC. Now, inputting the measurements, BC is 7 centimeters, 
and AC is 25 centimeters. Centimeters cancel centimeters, and so the ratio for the sine of A is 7 over 25. So notice that we're only trying to find the ratio. They want to find out what is the value of sine of angle A. We're not trying to find angle A. They just want to find out the sine of angle A. And the sine of angle A is 7 divided by 25. Let us now find the cosine of angle A. Now, cosine is adjacent, the adjacent length divided by the hypotenuse. So notice sine is opposite over hypotenuse. And so cosine now, as we have here, is adjacent over hypotenuse. And we look at the adjacent side. Now, which side is the adjacent? We didn't mention that side. Well, it has to be AB, correct? In relation to angle, acute angle A, the side that's next to it, that's not the hypotenuse, is the adjacent side. That's how we identify it. adjacent. Adjacent means next to. So that's the side that is next to the acute angle A, since we're referring to acute angle A. Another way to identify the adjacent side is the side with the acute angle, the required acute angle, or the acute angle that we're talking about, and the right angle. So this side, AB, has both the acute angle A and the right angle on it. So that's the adjacent side, AB. And the hypotenuse, which is part of the formula here, is AC. And so inputting the measurements, AB has a length of 24 centimeters. Let's put that in. And AC has a length of 25 centimeters. And so our ratio, or the fraction, represents the cosine of A, angle A is 24, 25. So typically, if we have a fraction, we can consider it to be a ratio as well. So it's 24 over 25. And these are actually called trigonometric ratios, sine, cosine, and tangent. But if we wanted to find the tangent, though, although that's not asked, we could actually just put it here, the tangent of angle A. If we want to find the tangent of angle A, we pay attention to the formula. It's going to be the opposite length over the adjacent in considering um, acute angle A. The opposite length is 7 centimeters. And the adjacent length, that's the side next to the acute angle A, is 24 centimeters. Centimeters cancel centimeters, and so the ratio for the tangent of A is 7 over 24. Notice that we're dealing with acute angle A, which is this acute angle here. And obviously, this side is opposite. So obviously, since we're going to now deal with acute angle C, this side is not opposite acute angle C. So this will no longer be the opposite in relation to acute angle C. It's opposite in relation to acute angle A, but not C. So let's look at that now. Okay, so again, since we have the 90 degree angle here, opposite this acute angle is the side, the hypotenuse. That never changes, right? Because the, acute, the right angle is always 90 degrees. It always stays fixed. So this is the acute angle we're now talking about, acute angle C. So we want to find the opposite side, and this side AB will be the opposite, because it's opposite the acute angle C. Now this side that is right next to acute angle C is what we call the adjacent. The very definition of adjacent means next to. So side BC is next to acute angle C. It's called adjacent. And the hypotenuse, although it's next to acute angle C as well, it has its own special name because it faces or is opposite the 90 degree angle, so we call it the hypotenuse. Okay, so now that we have all sides named, we can now find the sine of C. And the sine of C is still gonna be opposite over hypotenuse, because that's the formula. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So now we can replace opposite with what? We have as its measurement our length, which is 24 centimeters, and the hypotenuse is 25 centimeters. 
I put centimeters over centimeters, they will cancel. So I'll just leave it right there. All right, I could have simply replaced the opposite with AB divided by hypotenuse, which is AC, but I'll just input the measurement one time. And now let's put the cosine of acute angle C. Now, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So we want to have the adjacent on top and the hypotenuse below as a divisor. So we have the numerator and denominator. Now in the numerator is the adjacent. And so the adjacent here, the side next to the acute angle C is seven centimeters. And the hypotenuse facing 90 degrees is 25 centimeters. Again, I could have just left this off. So leave it as seven over 25, since these will always cancel. And the tangent of acute angle C, I said we will actually include that as well. You should actually have the angle symbol above them. Um, the tangent of acute angle C, tangent is what? Opposite over adjacent. So ka toa. So ka toa. So tangent is opposite over adjacent. And so what is opposite? Opposite in relation to acute angle C. Acute angle C and the opposite that side we have is 24. And the adjacent, the side next to acute angle C is seven centimeters. So we recognize the tangent of C is 24 over seven. Cosine of C, angle C is seven over 25. And sine of C, 24 or 25. Now, of course, persons who might be a little in a, in a higher form, such as probably class 11 or so, they might also learn that if you want to find the tangent, you can simply divide the sine of angle C over the cosine of angle C, although this is not necessary if you utilize the formula. But we can recognize that sine of C is 24 over 25, 24 over 25 divided by the cosine of angle C, which is seven over 25. And if you were to divide this, you'll actually get 24 over seven. Okay, so let's look at how we can compute this. Let's say we take it down here, All right? So we have 24 over 25. And now we're gonna divide. Now when we're dividing a fraction by another fraction, we change division to multiplication and the divisor we upturn or we say we reciprocate, reciprocate it. Now 25 will cancel 25. When you're multiplying two fractions, cancel numerator with denominator, goes once. 24 times one is 24 and one times seven is seven. So we see we get the same answer. Hope this video was helpful.